Well, our next speaker is uh, Mr Graham Cole. Graham has been involved in the plastics industry for almost 40 years, commencing his career with then ACI Plastics in the packaging industry in 1970. He was moved to ro rotational moulding in 1971 and has been actively involved in many aspects of the business since that time. He completed a certificate course in mechanical engineering, but chose to follow a career in sales, subsequently completing qualifications in industrial sales and marketing, financial control, total quality management and many others. Commencing as, as a sales representative, he became a manager of a newly acquired business in Sydney, then transferred back to Melbourne to take up national sales management position for the company. In 1987, he became general manager of Nilex Rotor Moulding, overseeing threefold growth that a company in that company until retirement in 2002. Graham travelled the world seeking ways to improve his company's performance. He has been involved in Armour from its very early days, including one period as president. So I'd like you to all welcome Graham Cole. He's going to talk about supercalifragilisticalism, the art of a product development. Thank you. Please, please forgive the name, but I want you to know I attended the show Mary Poppins and as I was with my grandchildren I, I had to pretend I was really interested and I was because there was a great message in the, in the show and I just, in, in saying that I just want you to know that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, there is something you can learn and I, I appreciate what Bill said. I've been into, I don't know how many rotor moulding plants all over the world, and there is always something you can learn. It doesn't matter if it's the best plant in the world or the worst plant. There's something that you can learn. And, and I would say to everyone who's going on the tour right now, uh, after the close of the conference, that you go in with your eyes wide open and your mind equally open, because whatever you see there is something that you can take away and one good thing can make a big difference to your business and I, I gave up counting the lots of one good things that I saw that saved Nilex Rotor Mould in its day an absolute fortune. So supercalifragilist I can't even say it <laughs> and, I, and I invented it um, it's the art of product development and I just I'm, I call on Lisa right now to help me um, go to the next bit because I just want you to appreciate the song. Everybody welcome the company of Mary Poppins! I think it's going to prove to be a rather useful one When trying to express oneself is frankly quite absurd To leave through lengthy lexicons to find the perfect word A little spontaneity keeps conversation keen You need to find a way to say precisely what you mean Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious Even though Just 
quality wasn't as good as it was on my computer, but that's, um, that, that's fine. The, the word supercalifragilisticexpialidocious is, is a strange word. And it, it applies to life in a way that we can't quite imagine. In the song they said, that's not a word. And of course it's not a word. But it is now. And it's a, it's a useful word in the context of the, of the show because they use it to, to demonstrate things right through the show. It doesn't mean anything, but it means whatever you want it to mean. So what do I take from the word supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? I don't really know, but I hope that in the next few minutes I can un unfold it for you. According to Wikipedia, it is a word, and it's a word from the Disney musical of Mary Poppins, describing a quality that is, in other words, un indescribable. Um, when you haven't got another word to describe something, you, you invent a word. And I'm sure we all do it. We all have words that we use that describe something that we can't otherwise describe. Quite simply, in the show, Mary Poppins saw a need. She was put into an environment where there was a problem. She saw a need and she provide us, pro provided a solution. If you haven't seen the show, what she did was restore the self-esteem of the children that she was working with. And she fulfilled the need. In fulfilling the requirements of the children, she actually fulfilled the requirements of the family. This isn't a, this isn't a sermon on how to fix your family. I'm just trying to demonstrate that whatever you're looking at, there's an opportunity to learn. But I, I think we should break it down in, into words that we can understand because it's, it's not a real word, but it's made up of real words. Super, and I, I just put a B on it and make it superb. And I think superb is the only way that I can describe the work done by rotational moulders over the years that I've been involved. As, as uh, David said, I've been involved since 1971. It's a very long time and I've seen lots of amazing things done. And, you know, just to qualify what we've learned at the, co the conference here, the work that Garth Galloway is doing with, with Disney is absolutely amazing. You know, to think of making a part that's six metres long, I forget how wide it was, Garth, two and a half metres or something and half a metre deep, with a shrinkage tolerance of 1%, is, is absolutely amazing. It's uh, the amazing work done by researchers, beginning with, with Roy Crawford, we've heard his name a few times in the conference, and Paul Nugent at Queen's University. They started it all, but it's continued by, by people like Mark and other places all over the world in, in America and other places. And, and, and it's also the work done by machinery manufacturers. You know, you can't, you can't understand the difference between a, a modern rotor moulding machine with the controls that it has and the ones that I started off with in, in 1971. The work done by the, the polymer industry and and that will continue and it will change and, and, it, and it grows as we progress along the line. It's, it's amazing to think that polyethylene is such a simple, it's probably not simple, I'm, I'm uh, doing it an injustice, but it's, it's a basic plastic that is capable of so many things. 
and the work done by the additive suppliers that, that have enabled us to make polyethylene that will last outside in the sun for who knows how long. I, I was involved in the installation of a tank farm in Melbourne in 1980 and I drive past that tank farm every time I go to the airport and I look at it and it's still there and it's still the original tanks. They're all black um, and, and they were coloured in those days with carbon black. Uh, but they're 30 years old and they are holding chemicals and they're still working well. And, and today it's, it's just more advanced. Cal is the next word that I take out of the, the name and cal is calorie and it's a measurement of, of heat. And it's, again, if we go back to the work done by, by uh, the researchers and, and in giving us graphs like this that enable us to understand what is happening inside the process, help us to understand the temperatures that we should be using, helping us to understand the heat input that we, we need and, and, and the effect of that on the physical properties of the product. You know, we've just got to keep learning. Fragilistic, um, fragile and, and it's, the, it's the state of the market. It was interesting listening to, to Bill just a few minutes ago and it, the, the trends that are evident in the marketplace are so much determined by factors outside of our control. But today the market is uncertain. You know, in, in Australia at least the, the market is uncertain. Especially if you're in the water tank business. But on the news this morning they said La Nina has finished. The temperatures of the oceans are now back to normal levels and the adverse weather conditions that we've been experiencing in the last year will, will slow down, will stop. But the opposite effect to a La Nina is an El Nino and we all know what they do if it lasts long enough. So, but understand the trend, there may be an improvement in the, in the ability. The, the massive rains and floods that we've had will stop as La Nina has finished. The market is unpredictable. We can't know what's going to happen. In the uh, federal budget, the Australian federal budget, somewhere in this book, I have a newspaper cutting. I took this newspaper cutting, which you can't see, obviously, and I'm sorry I'm not smart enough to have scanned it in and, and added it so you could all see it. But it says rebate, water under the bridge. And in the federal budget of last week, they've, uh, the, federal, the federal rebate system for water tanks has been stopped. Uh, it says in the article the reason why it's stopped is that no one was using it. So either we didn't know about it or we didn't tell our customers about it, but basically no one was using it, so they've stopped it. It's going to save, the no one who's using it means it's going to save 80 or 90 million dollars, so obviously someone was using it. <laughs> the market is unstable, and, and, and we can't help that. We, we can't change what is a general rule and it's, it's uh, influenced by things outside of our control, government, the weather, world events. Uh, I was just in Egypt uh, on a holiday and the, the economy in, in Egypt has been destroyed by the revolution of January the 25th. Hopefully they will repair the political situation and the economy will recover but their major dollar income earner is tourism and tourism in, into Egypt right now is down 
by greater than 90% and some people say 99%. I know that wherever I went, there was no crowd. Not, not even a slight crowd. XBL uh, just di classifies experience. <coughs> and we all have this, and it's the knowledge that's contained in our business. The knowledge that your staff have, your customers have, your, the, the knowledge contained in your customer history. The knowledge that's contained in your inventories, your, your product inventory, your tooling inventories. It's all there. You, you know, your product development skills, and Bill was talking about trends, but it's, it's your ability to identify the needs in the marketplace, your ability to create products out of, out of concept or from concept to reality. You know, we all have this, but sometimes we don't make time to use them. You know, your ability to read the trends in the marketplace is critical to your business. You know, if we look at the water tank business, we couldn't have expected what happened. We, you couldn't have just predicted that the drought would finish in a day. And, and for the next few months, we would have got so much water that we wouldn't know what to do with it. I mean, dams in Queensland that were empty and haven't been full for years, were overflowing within weeks. I, I did a trip through country Victoria and the Eildon, Eildon Weir in Easter last year was less than 25% of, of capacity. They had, at a place called Bonnie Doon, at the upper end of the weir, there hadn't been water under the bridge for, for many, many years. I went back there in October, and it was 78% full. And, it, and the water was under the bridge at Bonnie Doon. As I said, it hadn't been there for years. And the effect that has on the community is amazing. But what, what do you do? You need to have the ability to transport, transform trends into opportunities and to transport, ne transform needs into opportunities. Audacious, the end of the word, uh, simply means audacity. And, the, is, and that is, I can only describe as the desire to take the next step. Bob Catter at a conference that we had in Cairns, and I think it was 1995, but I, I'm, my memory is not that good, but he, he urged us to study the marketplace. He was the keynote speaker, the opening, opening speaker at this conference. And it was probably the first big conference that we'd ever had. And there was a lot of people there. And Bob said, study the marketplace. Make the rotationally moulded market bigger. Compete with other technologies, not yourselves. I've heard Roy Crawford speak many times and, and his urge is to embrace the technology that's been developed and make our process more competitive. And he, I, I, again I can't remember how many times I've heard him say it, but he says all of the time competition comes from other technologies, not from other rotational moulders. And, and it's, it's those things that we need to, to study. The superb work done by everyone will amount to nothing if we don't heed the advice of Bob Catter and Roy Crawford. If we have no market because other technologies have taken it away, it doesn't matter what you do. We've just got to make the pie bigger. And I mean really bigger. Not just a little bit, but we've got to look outside the square and make the pie so much bigger. I'm, I'm now going to tell you a bit of old history. 
Um, I did approach some some uh, moulders to 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 talk about new history, but they they're fairly protective of the new history, so they didn't want to tell me. Well, I knew about the new history, but they didn't want me to tell you. So I'm going to tell you a bit of old history. When I was working at Nilex, way back in 1980, we decided, and we were in the chemical storage business, but a lot of our customers were asking us for a safe container to transport dangerous goods. So we decided to change our business philosophy from one of, of um, chemical storage to liquid materials handling. So we still encompass the storage aspect, but we, we looked broader at the market. And after several attempts, we, uh, we made this product, which is known in, as the bulky box. It, was, it took two years and four moulds to get it right. It had to pass Initially, there was no rules, but the, each state government in Australia had a set of rules that dictated what you could and couldn't do. And so we made it to a composite of the worst or the strictest requirements of, of the marketplace. Halfway along the line, each of those states decided to adopt a UN standard or a UN regulation for the transport of dangerous goods which is still in use today, and this container still meets the requirements. But the market for this product is dying. The market isn't dying, just the market for this product. Because today, I, I, and I don't have a picture, I'm sorry, but there is a blow moulded product, which is on the market, and it's 25% of the price or even less. So the competition isn't coming from someone, some other moulder who is making a similar product. It's coming from a, a product. The, the, the plastic part of this weighs 40 kilos. The blow moulded part weighs 20 kilos. The frame for this is m made manually and, and costs a small fortune. The, the frame for the blow moulded container is mass produced automatically. This one will last a hundred trips but the, and the blow moulded one will only last five. But the trend in the market is that the chemical companies that use these sorts of containers don't get a hundred trips out of them and they can't afford to pay the price for, for something which ends up being one trip a year. But at 25% at of the price, they don't really care. That they can use it once a year and, and they still charge the customer for it anyway. This is another product from Nilex. And I, and I put this in because the road to the product development was quite different. In the, in the case of the bulky box, it was listening to what the market said. In this case, there had been an industrial accident. A worker packing shelves in a supermarket had, had fallen through the device that he was using to pack the shelves. The device was an upturned milk crate. Uh, milk crates are designed to carry maybe 20 litres, 20 kilograms of milk, not 60, 70, 80 kilograms of person. So, and this person was badly injured. He, he, he had his leg gashed and, and he was unable to work for, for a long time after, after the accident. He ripped his calf muscle extremely... Sorry about my phone. I forgot to turn it off. <laughs> um, he, he, was, he fell through the milk crate and the bottom of the milk crate is, is, uh, is heavily 
cross hatched and the, and as the thing broke the jagged pieces ripped his calf muscle almost off his leg I don't have a picture of that aren't you lucky so the the company the the supermarket company which in this case was Coles and the and the union which was the which which wasn't a very powerful union but the union nonetheless told Coles that if they didn't fix the problem they wouldn't have anyone to pack their shelves so Coles the safety people from Coles and the and the union came to visit us because we were an established supplier they had they had already identified a need and they approached us as, the, as their normal supplier we listened to everything they said and we designed the product to incorporate everything they said they wanted a step they wanted a secure place to stand they wanted it to be non-slip they wanted to accommodate the, even the biggest of people so so that's what we did and we made the product they accepted the design we we made the molds we made some pro prototypes which they tested we we knew instantly that it would work because the first thing that happened was that all of the operators in the factory grabbed the ones that weren't any good and they used them on the machine they were easy to use they were light but they were secure in in the fact that they could stand on them comfortably in the end it was a, an enormous success uh, I, don't, I don't have knowledge uh, of how many we actually made but I can tell you it was um, many many tens of thousands of those those products but what's happened in the marketplace today is that it's been copied by all and sundry so the price has dropped the market has been commoditized and and it will never be the same the market still exists and Coles still buy that product from the company which is now the, the, the holder of the tooling which is the company that bought Nilex from the liquidator you didn't know what market you're in it looks like I've got to speed up know you, know your limitations of your product to the market know what the limitations imposed by industry know what the standards are know what government regulations exist to control the market whether the regulations are, are stable or under constant review and, and what is your competition try and work out how big the potential market is um, who are the major customers you know is there one major customer we were lucky with that product because Coles happened to be half the supermarket industry in Australia I, I forget how many supermarkets they have but every one of their stores not only the Coles supermarkets but the, the Meyer stores, the Target stores, Kmart stores everything associated with Coles has, has that product in them making it a different colour every Woolworths store has, has it and for everyone from Australia will know that Coles and Woolworths control 80% of the retail market in that in our country so what's the real need work it out understand what it is understand what the cost of your product is but understand how much it costs to transport it and, and store it what are the safety re the requirements um, and, and the other things that, that, that are important the, the other important thing is in product development is to understand why your customers buy product why do they buy from you can you make the product better to suit them sorry I'll, uh, I'll kill it and kill the phone
uh, can you improve the product to make their product better, for, more appropriate for their needs? And know, know why they choose to deal with you. So, th these are simple things, but there's, there's not always evident to us. In every market, there's always someone who does well. In e economic good times, they boom, and in economic bad times, they excel. Know your marketplace. Study the market and know who your potential, who are your business potential partners are. Talk to non-related businesses to understand how they manage the vagaries of the business cycle. One of the things I always found very helpful was to talk to the people who handled our waste. The sales representative for the waste company, he knew exactly what businesses were doing well and which businesses were doing bad. Because if he wasn't picking up waste, he knew they weren't making anything. It's a, that's talk to your suppliers and, and they'll tell you. Sales representatives are very good sources of information because they're so full of themselves, they'll tell you anything. <laughs> I should know that because I am one, I was one. <coughs> what does it take? It takes time. And, and I, I particularly chose this frame on the thing because it's got two clocks. It takes time and you, you can't always speed it up. I mean, sometimes you get a, a request to make something and, oh, I've got to have it next week because I forgot to order it. And you can, you can if you're lucky, you can do it. I remember one instance where we actually had a tool made in 48 hours to supply a customer. I wouldn't want to do it every week. The sooner, the sooner you start with product development, the sooner you'll get a result. The best time to do product development is in the middle of a boom, when you've got the money. I, I noted the, the, in David's presentation yesterday, he said, well, in the middle of the boom, put the money aside so that you can do it when you're quiet. It doesn't matter how you do it, but use the money wisely. And, and then just allocate the time you have and use it well. I know you all say I haven't got time, but I'm, I have to tell you, I'm here to tell you that the most important thing you can do is make time to do it. And it takes money. And the other two piles, I know they're piles of paper, but I've pretended they're actually piles of money. Um, and I'm not smart enough to change it, so I'm, I'm a I'm not one of those computer nerds that we had talking to us the other day. I appreciate what he says and I believe it will happen. But I'm not that smart. But know who you... The people who work for you already have the answers. Your customer service personnel, your sales people, your delivery drivers. Your delivery driver can tell you a lot about the customer. Teach them about your business. Help them to understand. What, what it is that makes your business tick. Promote your products. Um, I know there's some people who are not here at this conference because they're busy promoting their products at another uh, trade fair that's on in, in Melbourne right now. Promote the process. When I was at Nilex, we used to have, we used to run a program in conjunction with one of the local universities where we took students from the, from the, uh, engineering school, the finance, the commerce school, the design school and there was four of them, I can't remember the other one, but we take we took two groups of students, two eight students in each group and we gave them a real-time project which they did as part of their course but in doing it, whatever they did, they had to understand what rotational moulding was and, and it comes home to uh, Angus MacDonald, I'm sure many of you know Angus, he's an industrial designer. He was one of those students. After, the, after he finished the course he came to work for us and, and now he's out on his own and, and doing stuff. Uh, participate in trade shows, like come to events like this. Participate in, in shows that, that are selling product into the market that you serve. 
belong to trade associations, not just the Roto Moulders Trade Association, but if you're in the water industry, belong to the Water Tank Association if there is, and not just the plastic tank group, but if there's a water association, become part of it. Understand the, the business you're in. When, and when you think you've finished, start again, because it's never finished. A senior executive of Little Tykes, one of the many companies that I've visited in my life, told me that they try to release a new product every week. Either a new product or a modified product, but one every week. This, um, this little car here is 30 years old. It's the biggest selling car in the US and it's basically unchanged. But what they do to change it is just change the colours, change the, the things they put on the front of it, change its appearance by, by small additional things to make it more attractive to a newer marketplace. Going back to the word supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, the show is filled with magic and it's they achieve things by doing things magically. But in product development, there's no magic formula. Just the allocation of time and resources. You need to identify a need, provide a solution, and fill the need. And it requires continuous hard work. It just never stops. And the only way to do it if you don't do it already, you need to start today. And that's all I have to say to you. Start today because it's never easy. Thanks.